After slapping a record 2.8 billion US dollar fine on Alibaba and telling Ant to restructure into a financial holding company, China is getting tough on the other players. It has given them a month to address anti-competitive behaviors, such as the practice of forcing merchants to choose between their platform or that of their competitors. We've seen these tightening regulations environment happening about half a year ago. Now we're just seeing some uh, results and more clarifications uh, on the details of the new regulation. So yeah, definitely, uh, definitely, I think there will be more um, uh, regulations on internet companies in China. The aim of these regulations is to promote fair competition in the e-commerce platform space. The sector is flourishing in China, but it's currently dominated by a few big players who've been able to tie down merchants and customers within their internet ecosystems. As the platform grow, you know, it's sort of a mass gigantic market, right? So it has, it can exert undue pressure on many of the suppliers and, and, and many of the suppliers are very small businesses. Uh, so they have to sort of give in uh, to be able to sell their products on the platform. And also, you know, because the platform is so big, it, it sort of get into people's everyday life in the mess, a lot of data uh, regarding people's personal life. And it, there's no regulation currently as to how the platform can use this personal data, personal information uh, to make money. Beijing wants more open ecosystems that give merchants the option of selling their products on different platforms. All these changes will, however, not change the role of the platform company in China. They will continue to be the facilitator or middleman between consumers and producers or merchants. The platform-based business tend to grow bigger and bigger and have the winners take all effects, right? This is the same in the United States. If you think about the search engine of the Google and the social network of the Facebook, and even in this region, if you think about the right holding business and the, the grab actually uh, take a pretty dominant market share, right? The platform economy has also become entrenched in the Chinese economy. You know, since the uh, the pandemic, people changed the way they live their lives, right? So I think now people are more than comfortable uh, to order things online. And I think, I think the, uh, the online sales industry uh, in China has developed uh, into a very sophisticated stage, right? So now you can actually order online and you can get anything. Going forward, platform companies will have to change the way they do business. The question is, how will this affect their long-term revenue growth and costs of operations? Alibaba needs to adapt to the new environment and make some uh, adjustments in, in uh, its business practices. Uh, for instance, it needs to be uh, provide more value to its merchants and prove, prove that they can reduce the operating costs for the merchants, etc., in the face of the competition. There may also need to be an overhaul of their business model. Currently, they tend to go for a super app strategy, where they essentially provide a marketplace for a range of products and services. Like WeChat, like Meituan, like Alipay, that consumers typically, that they can shop, they can order food delivery, they make payments, they can assess multiple services on the same app. Right, so this super app strategy has helped the company to extract more value from each of their individual customers. And it also helped the firm to develop their mode or the, the, the defense strategy to fending off potential competitors and strengthening the market power. Chinese regulators could break up the super app company into many different companies specializing in different areas. This ensures there is no one big company with unfair market power dominating the e-commerce landscape. 
there's a possibility to separate some of the business units or uh, business lines out of the super app back to and let some of the business to operate independently. So for instance, like the regulator recently requested end group to cut off the connection between its payment platform and its the financial platform. In the case of Ant Group, a 33% affiliate of Alibaba, experts say it makes sense to make Ant cut off the linkage between its payment services, Alipay, and its financial related activities. The inference is trying to maybe separate different activities of the whole value chain so that the companies might be able to focus on one specific domain of the fintech business rather than maybe allowing a humongous company that can integrate all different activities of the fintech. But it will hurt Ant financially since its payments business is not hugely profitable and the lucrative businesses are actually the consumer lending and microfinancing units. Over the long term, then the end group have to find the new sources of the revenue, right? So uh, like PayPal, for instance, the PayPal, the main sources of the revenue is to charge commission, the commission fee on each transaction. But end group actually the commission of the each transaction actually is close to zero. Ant's parent, Alibaba, will also have to look for new sources of growth. Alibaba uh, definitely have other growth engines such as uh, cloud e-grocery, uh, which is uh, the next big e-commerce uh, uh, opportunity in China. You've seen others like Meituan, PDD investing in that as well. They also have uh, invested in other areas like logistics and the overseas e-commerce market like in uh, Southeast Asia.